And we are back on our show today, and we are here with the director, the producer, the writer. You get the coffee too, right? I this is coffee, yes. James Travers, and he is everything. He is the omnipotence of dreams. James, thanks so much for letting us show the movie here and share it with everybody, and, and, and for being here today with us, because I know you're not always super comfortable being in front of the camera. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> I, was, I have a little cameo in the movie. I play two parts, and um, I... I have a beard and longer hair. You were hiding behind. I was yeah. hiding behind the beard and longer <laughs> hair, but um, I actually paid two parts in the film. But that was only because I just wanted to get it done, and I didn't want to audition anybody else. So, so how long have you been wanting to be a filmmaker? Well, I started. I started making films when I was 12 years old. I I saved up and um, I bought a Kodak M22 movie camera. And that was a 50-foot magazine, Super 8. You put it in, no sound. You could just turn the camera on, turn it off. There was no, no f other functions to it. And so all through my teens, I um, experimented with filmmaking and narrative films. I started working with narrative films. I, um, when I was 16, I started a uh, space epic called uh, A Time for Peace. I played with uh, a building spaceship models and testing different ways of shooting and blowing things up. Um, I always like to blow you, things you up. You love to blow things up, I I've noticed it. that. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that's very that's a big key to a to a movie is things have to blow up. So um, <laughs> uh, it's a lot of explosions. And um, then I went to uh, Kent State and um, took filmmaking uh, with uh, teacher named, instructor named Dick Myers. Mm -hmm. I eventually finished my education at the University of Akron uh, with a commercial art degree and um, moved to New England. And I worked in the apparel industry for Fruit of Loom, okay. doing t-shirt graphics for the NFL and the NBA, um, NHL. Um, and then later on, I worked on some of the DreamWork pictures and okay. actually George Lucas's um, First Star Wars, the Episode One. I don't. It's not. It wasn't the first Star Wars. It was, it was the fourth one. It was the fourth one. Yes. Yeah. Then later on, um, I just decided to make film. It was uh, 2010. It took okay. me seven years to make this film. Seven started, years. Yeah, I started in October of uh, 2010, and I just finished it up uh, October of last year, 2017. Now, how much is it? How much? What kind, of, what kind of budget? How much does it cost to make a film? over the course of seven years, or is it because of the budget that it took seven years to get this done? Well, it's pretty much for the budget, it was a nano budget or a non-existent budget. And it's so unique. How in the world did you figure out you wanted to integrate 3D video with the, uh, with the, with the live action? Well, part, part of that was budget. I mean, if I, if I could go out and blow up a real bridge, um, I had the money to do that. I'd probably <laughs> go out and blow up a real bridge. But, um, you got a lot of trouble as a kid, didn't you? No, no, no. no. <laughs> I, I, I almost burned the garage down um, uh, a couple times when I was making my space epic, but um, but uh, it, it, a lot had a lot of it had to do with uh, budgeting, mm -hmm. and it's easier to build a, a tiger tank in the, in the computer and blow it up than it is to go out and build a full size tiger tank or and yeah. blow that up, or if you can even find tiger tanks anymore, I'm not sure. But. <laughs> now, you. You took seven years to make this film. Yeah. Uh, where did you have the set? Did you rent a space or, or what? No, we shot on location, and then um, for the, the live action, um, you know, there's a saying in film that if it's outside the frame, it doesn't exist. Right. And so um, I was living in New England at the time in a condo, and I basically um, took everything out of my kitchen and I make cardboard sets um, for Murphy's background. That's a cardboard set hand-painted. Um, and then uh, for the rest of the sets, I use black, uh, black drops around the kitchen. I filmed the, the eight live actors, and then I rotoscoped around them, and I put um, the 3D model of the Murphy pub. So that's a, that's a model, too. That's a 3D model, the interior of the pub. So I would rotoscope them and then drop in the backgrounds that I wanted. Um, so everything was done in basically my kitchen, all the live action, except for the um, 
except for the outdoor scenes, you know, in the, in the snow that was that was done um, out outdoors in right. location. The Omnipotence of Dreams. Well, how did you come up with that title? Well, I the I, I started off when I was young as a surrealist painter. And um, I was always interested in uh, Salvador Dali and the Surrealists. And the father of Surrealism, a guy named uh, Breton, he coined that phrase. He, he wrote the, what, what's called the Surrealist Manifesto in 1923. And later on, he coined the phrase. He said that Surrealism is the omnipotence of dreams and the undirected play of thought. And I always like that saying. Um, and uh, it's always worked with, you know, with my uh, approach and my construction of my work. It just naturally fell into, I thought, well, you know what, I'm just going to call it the omnipotence of dreams. How does this film, and the uh, aspects you have, and how does that compare to your other work, like your, your paintings and your illustrations and such? There always has been a surreal element to my, to my work, a dreamlike quality, an unreal, a, a, um, a kind of a world just left or right of center mm -hmm. and um, uh, so in my in my paintings and um, uh, uh, other aspects other animations and things there is that aspect of surrealism went from eight millimeter films watching films eight millimeter films to a complete feature film how does that feel you know I'm, I'm, I'm happy I, I finished it um, I learned a lot along the way um, there's nothing there's nothing like um, a good education than uh, actually doing it yeah. and so I, I encourage anybody that if you have aspirations to do this to go out and do something do a 15 minute film or, or a half hour film it took me seven years to make it but I have you know I did it I think Woody Allen was the one that said that 99% of life is just showing up yeah and so um, you really have to get out there and just, just try it. Any other projects, film projects you're working on right now? Yes, I am. Okay. I am. I'm working with this very talented guy named Dave Bingham. <laughs> I don't know if you know him. I, I, I've heard of him, but mostly in cussing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, I, you know, well, I'm working on this one kind of funny project that um, is kind of go on a, on a trajectory that um, don't know where it's going or where it's going to land, but it's called uh, Space Force One, mm -hmm. and um, you're kind of putting together the um, the, the writing and, the, and aspects of it. And I'm I'm bringing in some of the the 3D models and the technical support because I've seen your work, and I mean I laugh out loud. I mean it's just funny. It's just funny work, and I thought, well, this guy's this guy's got something going here, <laughs> and so I wouldn't mind I wouldn't mind putting putting a little work in on um, on uh, on this project so uh, Space Force One and, um, I and there's going to be explosions some really many, good explosions many explosions yeah. one more thing here we got to share your, your movie and really grateful to be able to do that but where can they watch this uninterrupted by our silliness oh um, well it's it's on Amazon Prime now. If you have Amazon Prime, you can go and you can watch it. It's streaming, or you can actually buy the DVD mm -hmm. on Amazon Prime. That's up now. And on the DVD, it has some extras, some behind the scenes, uh, the making of, and it shows how the the uh, green screen and the models were integrated into it. Um, so you can go to Amazon and, and look it up, or you could go to um, my website, traversstudio.com, and there's links. And um, on traversstudio.com, you can see some of my other work, or all of my other work. And um, there's links to buy my paintings or, or, um, or buy the DVDs on that, too. So, hey, James, thank you so much. Thank you. This is a, it's a, it was a really a great thing. It's the first actually uh, uh, independently produced film we've ever gotten. Usually we're, we're king of the, the public domain, but we got to actually do an original film this time, and we really appreciate that.